Ready? Yep. There we go. All right, so I'm Kara. I'm a music major here, and today I'll be talking about synesthesia. So just as a brief outline of what we'll be talking about, I'll first explain what synesthesia is, then some different forms of it. I'll then talk more about musical synesthesia and my experience with it, followed by why should we study it. Synesthesia. So John Harrison is a pretty well-known scientist, and he said that it is a neurologically based condition in which stimulation of one sensory or cognitive pathway leads to automatic involuntary experiences in the second sensory or cognitive pathway. Basically, this just means that two or more of your senses are overlapped, and you experience one sense involuntarily when you experience another sense. It often runs in families, but not, in, but not enough research has been done to prove if it's genetic or not. And it's very hard to say how many people have synesthesia, just because there are many different forms. Um, some is more mild than for others. There are many different forms of synesthesia. Uh, letters and numbers associated with colors is probably the most common. So if you look at the diagram, most of you would probably see a picture like this as the one on the left but someone with this form of synesthesia would see it as the picture on the right. So it would be very easy for them to tell you how many twos are in this diagram. The second most common is sounds associated with colors, followed by letters or numbers associated with personalities, like four is trustworthy, five is angry. <laughs> <laughs> there are 61 known forms. After this, the other forms are really rare. And we will focus on sound synesthesia. <coughs> So sound synesthesia is when every musical pitch is associated with a specific color. And some people actually see the color, which is kind of like a fireworks show whenever they hear music or uh, someone speaks or something. But others feel a color, which is basically you hear a noise and you feel seeing a color, which is kind of hard to explain. But if you just understand that the senses are overlapped, it's a, it's a little easier to understand. Some examples where synesthesia are seen are in the movie The Soloist, where Jamie Foxx shows fireworks during the music, and this is, some people actually do see this. In Ratatouille, when the rat eats, there's like fireworks of colors, which is another form of synesthesia. So Wikipedia actually compiled a list of uh, composers and artists who have stated in autobiographies that they have synesthesia. List, Sibelius, and Rimsky-Korsakoff are three composers who have it, and Billy Joel and Stevie Wonder have both reported having it, too. So I tried to find some examples of synesthesia for you guys, and this diagram is from a study conducted by Oliver Sachs, and he found a pattern. This is one way of grouping notes. It's the circle of fifths, and he found that this person has a pattern where it's kind of in a rainbow around the circle of fifths. This is a girl named Julie, and on her blog, she actually posted a diagram of what she experiences. So as you can see, the two color schemes are very different for notes. This is middle C right here, and then B natural is the blue one at the end. So I actually have sound synesthesia. It became stronger as I started studying music my junior year of high school. And I feel colors. I don't actually see fireworks when people talk. And for example, a D is purple, and it's my favorite note because it makes my ears tickle. And F sharp is bright red, and it will hurt my ears. It'll be painful for me to sit in a room if someone's talking in F sharp all day. <laughs> so, so for B natural and C sharp, I don't really feel a color for that. So I usually know it's one of those pitches if I don't feel anything. And I tried to make a diagram for you. The C natural is actually white, but I left the B in the D flat blank so that, um, because those are the two that I don't really feel anything for. So G flat or F sharp is my least favorite note, and then the D, which is purple, is my favorite. So why study synesthesia? First of all, there hasn't been a lot of research done on it, but J.E. Asher is a scientist who thinks that people with autism have a high rate of synesthesia, which could lead to new educational techniques for people with autism if they knew more about this condition. <coughs> it also could explain why some people can memorize hundreds of digits of pi and other irrational numbers. It's pretty impossible to memorize pi, but if you see it as a color scheme, it's a lot easier to remember the pattern of the colors. Again, it could also lead to new teaching methods and education systems. 
some schools think that one in 22 people have some form of synesthesia, and if it's really this frequent, there could be new education systems for a whole, a, a wide fraction of kids with it. Also, it could lead to a greater understanding of the arts. If you listen to something by Rimsky Korsakoff, it's probably easier to understand knowing that he had synesthesia and when he was composing, he used that as his inspiration. So thank you for listening. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs>